Muchas gracias, presidente. Y siendo español, como también lo es Gibraltar, no le sorprenderá que mi preocupación y mis preguntas vayan dirigidas y se centren sobre todo en esta colonia administrada por el Reino Unido. Y como se habló un poco de Brexit, yo simplemente pondría una frase. Brexit is Brexit, tanto para el Reino Unido como para la colonia que administra. Sin engaños y sin atajos. Yo creo que es todo. El señor Tipping eh, hablaba y el presidente tomó sus palabras cuando ha terminado el señor Tipping ha dicho si se aplicara todo lo como usted dice sería una administración aventajada y ha añadido el ponente cerca de la perfección. Yo sinceramente no lo creo, no creo que esto sea así porque nadie duda que las características de, de unas paraíso fiscal pues son muy parecidas a las que hemos visto, fiscalidad de empresas, la propia comisión declara que es perjudicial tal como está haciendo, un amplio sector offshore, un número de sociedades en las que no voy a entrar si son 30.000, 28.000, como dice la OCDE, o son 15.000, como se ha manifestado aquí. No importa, en todo caso, son muchas. Sell companies, sociedades sin actividad, que bueno, lo que vienen a hacer es ocultar la identidad a las autoridades fiscales sobre dónde están situados sus activos financieros. Tax ruling, la Comisión ha abierto investigación. Pero luego la, la Unión Europea hay mucha burocracia. Allí, evidentemente, no. Tax ruling en tres días está resuelto muchas veces, ¿no? Lo cual, a lo mejor, es verdad que roza la perfección y es un ejemplo. Pero permítanme que yo tenga dudas. Y, en ese sentido, me gustaría hacer las preguntas. ¿Siguen emitiendo tax ruling a pesar de la investigación abierta? ¿En qué términos se está haciendo? ¿Se han tomado medidas dada la investigación abierta? ¿Van a tomar algunas medidas para evitar de que los defraudadores pues, utilicen Gibraltar para esconder las identidades. Y también quería referirme, aunque sea muy brevemente, a algo que me parece fundamental, que es el contrabando de tabaco. Los datos de tabaco son muy llamativos, aquí no se ha mencionado, pero si en el 2015 estamos hablando de una importación de 55 millones de cajetillas al año, evidentemente, lo voy a decir como broma, pero no es una broma, no solo fuman los niños, es que fuman hasta los monos. Es imposible absolutamente que ese volumen se eh, utilice allí. Por tanto, a mí me gustaría que me dijeran qué medidas ha adoptado el Gobierno de Gibraltar para limitar el perjuicio a los intereses financieros de la Unión Europea que el contrabando provoca y si van a establecer o no contingentes de importación adecuados al consumo que debe ser considerado normal en el territorio. Los datos que le he dado yo creo, desde luego, que no son normales. Y si están controlando todas las transacciones de las importaciones y comunicando esta información a Lola. Muchas gracias. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. <coughs> um, well, thank you for that very interesting uh, statement on the part of the honourable member. Um, I do regret the tone slightly, but I'll hold myself back on that particular point. I think that the points could have been made in a much more understated and diplomatic manner given that certainly from this end we're technicians, but I will take them in order, sir, if that's all right with you. One, Gibraltar is not Spanish, clearly it's British, has been since 1704, end of story, um, and there we go. Sir, I was brought up in Gibraltar, my family's been there since 1800. Um, as a child growing up in Gibraltar, Gibraltar was a colony. That, unfortunately, was a very long time ago, given that I'm of a certain age, and uh, that was around, you know, when I was five years old, Gibraltar certainly was a colony. You are, anyone who makes a statement that Gibraltar is a colony today is almost delusional, sir. And I put it in those strong terms in the same way that you have put to me your particular view. The ambassador to Spain, the United Kingdom ambassador to Spain, wrote about a year ago a public letter in which he recognized, sir, that Gibraltar is a fully self-governing, um, fully self-financing uh, British overseas territory in which the competence of the United Kingdom is restricted to foreign affairs, defense, and certain aspects, certain aspects of internal uh, security, and nothing else. This is not the 1960s, sir. This is not a situation in which the, government, the governor of Gibraltar, whose sole function, essentially well, very, one very important function, is to represent the Queen as Queen of Gibraltar from a constitutional basis, sir, does not have underline, does not have executive authority in Gibraltar. Now, 
I was letting myself get carried away that, which is, for which I apologise. I now turn to the rest of the statements that you've made. Brexit is Brexit. I think that in my statement I said that we were, we were planning on the basis of a hard Brexit. Correct. We don't expect to have anything else. In the answers to the written questions I mentioned, perhaps the gentleman hasn't had a chance to read those, all of those, but I did mention that we were resigned to, despite the fact that Gibraltar had voted 96% to remain within the European Union, we are now where we are. We've been dealt this set of cards and we have to deal with it. We, <clears throat> from a Brexit point of view, are resigned to the fact that it will be hard. Why? Because we contemplate no concessions with regards to the obtaining or otherwise of a different special status. Um, turning to uh, the rest of the points in order, um, with regards to tax haven, sir, so I've recited countlessly the number of tax information exchange mechanisms that we have in place, etc. I point to two facts, though, so that we don't get involved in a ding-dong about whether you know, what I'm saying is correct or otherwise. Um, we answer Spanish requests for information, but more importantly, let's get to the nub of the issue. On, in September of this year, we are going to transfer bulk data to all member states of the European Union under the terms of the Directive on Administrative Cooperation as amended. Therefore, sir, the Kingdom of Spain will be receiving in September 2017 bulk data on all financial accounts held within Gibraltar. I turn to tax rulings because I'm conscious of the time. Tax rulings. The European Commission, the nub of the matter with regards to tax rulings issued in Gibraltar is that they should never have been called tax rulings in the first place. For it to constitute, for a tax ruling to constitute state aid, it requires that the tax ruling in itself exonerates a company from paying tax, whereas otherwise it would have paid such tax. Gibraltar has looked at every single one of the interpretations of the law that have been carried out, that were issued then, and is satisfied that in none of those cases has the income tax department in Gibraltar exonerated companies from tax, in other words, exonerated companies from tax when they should have actually been paying tax on that. So we are entirely confident. We continue to work with the Commission. We continue to send information with regards to that. To my knowledge, with regards to new interpretations of the law, um, I'm not aware of any significant number, if at all, if at all, so as to answer your question, that have been issued since then. That's understandable because people would want to, one, it makes no, uh, it would, it's understandable that companies would um, wish to await the results of the Commission investigation. However, I repeat that the Government of Gibraltar is entirely satisfied and very confident with regards to our position on that. Finally, sir, this slightly random introduction of tobacco, which, you know, I mean, I, it's not my particular field, given that I am, uh, I am uh, responsible for, for financial services rather than anything else. Um, and I, I fail to see the relevance of it, of that particular question with regards to the Panama Papers, etc., etc., etc. But um, just touching on it uh, for one moment with regards to... Um, I pub we publish, sir, and I refer to it again, and I think I'm going to make sure that the committee receives, all of you receive a copy of our national risk assessment. The risk assessment in talked of an analysis of theoretical threats, vulnerabilities, and risks in a money laundering and terrorist financing context. Now, this is as required under the Financial Act Action Task Force guidelines. And the gentleman may be interested in knowing that included in this methodology and included in this risks are a whole number of different uh, sectors which theoretically, theoretically could provide a scenario in which there could be a, for example, a money laundering uh, uh, event. And basically, what do we do to avoid such risk events? Sir, included in that, because we are entirely transparent, we include the risk of the tobacco sector being used somehow um, as an attractive target for money launderers, which is not the case. The point of us being as open and transparent in this area as possible is to make sure that it is entirely uh, the case that these risks and threats are addressed. With regards to volume of tobacco, etc., again, we could, we could uh, sit here and argue all day long, but, or discuss all day long, I should say, 
But with regards to the following, you are, the gentleman is aware that we have some 10 million visitors at least, I don't have the latest numbers that, uh, to hand, that cross the land frontier with Gibraltar, all of which, all of whom, excuse me, if they are over a certain age, are entitled to purchase a carton of cigarettes and uh, uh, cross the border with that, uh, subject to, obviously, to Spanish importation rules. Secondly, the Governor of Gibraltar, as you are fully aware, and the Chief Minister of Gibraltar has repeated ad nauseam in the past, introduced very severe legislation in, in respect of how much tobacco can be purchased by individuals, where can that tobacco actually be carried, it cannot be concealed upon a person, and to mitigate, to mitigate the risks contained, the theoretical risks and threats and vulnerabilities contained in our national risk assessment. So, okay. I apologise for taking up yeah. that time. I hope I have gone some way in answering the question. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Thank you very much for the, uh, to the uh, representative of the three jurisdictions. Uh, many things have been said, but there's a general point that I wanted to make, which is that you have extremely aggressive tax regimes that pose a really competitive disadvantage, disadvantage to the rest of the EU. And I have to tell you, in the light of Brexit, it is very clear that for the interest of the EU, uh, the access, your access to the single market should not be get for granted. And my question is very simple. In the light of the Brexit negotiations, would you be ready to significantly change and reform your aggressive tax regimes in order to secure your access to the single market? Because otherwise, and I want to be very clear on that, many groups in this chamber will ask for very concrete restrictions and even sanctions for the, actions, uh, for the access of the single market if many of the things, like for instance, uh, if I take Gibraltar, uh, where for instance uh, the, the income obtained outside, uh, outside Gibraltar does not pay taxes, there are also free taxes for incomes like intermediary activities, consultancy fees, passive income. If all this continues, it is absolutely interesting of the EU of not granting free access to the single market. And this will be asked in this chamber by several groups. So my question then is, are you ready to change those regimes? And then I have a concrete question, and I will end here, uh, Chair, on, uh, for Gibraltar, on the Category 2 status for some individuals that you are granting. Because you have currently 320 individuals with that Category 2 status, meaning individuals with different citizen, citizens, citizenship becoming tax residents in Gibraltar to benefit from your generous fiscal regime for rich people. The upcoming automatic exchange of tax information, if there are, you've been talking a lot about this today, um, which you committed to implement as of this year, foresees automatic information for non-residents. So my question is very clear. Out of these 320 individuals, will their information be shared or not? Or will you continue to be hidden the information for the, uh, for the citizens okay. that will be granted category to status? Thank you so much. Um, Briefly, on, on Brexit and the single market, we're, we're working on the basis that we're not going to have access to the single market. I mentioned hard Brexit before. With regards to citizenship, let me put it like, no, sorry, not citizenship. We don't offer citizenship. Residence. Um, residence. Um, the answer is as follows. If a resident is, sorry, if an individual is tax resident in Gibraltar, as at a certain point in time, then um, that individual will be subject to reporting um, <clears throat> on what the individual has in Gibraltar. In other, words, in other words, if a person, if I, for example, am resident in Gibraltar, which I am, then the reporting is to the income tax authorities in Gibraltar. If I, however, was resident in, say, the United Kingdom, um, then the reporting would be, to, um, would be to authorities in the United Kingdom. So the straightforward answer is, yes, you are right, in so much as if individuals are legitimately resident in Gibraltar, then they would not be reported on to another country in which they were previously, previously resident, unless the timing of the uh, directive on automatic information and the common reporting standard caught them by that manner. Except for the United States, because the United States we report on US persons regardless of where they're resident. Yeah. Okay, that, that very 20 seconds. 20 seconds. That means that nationals of you member states that have been uh, transferred their wealth in Gibraltar and that are right now follow, uh, that fall under category two status, their income and the information will not be shared with the rest of the EU. Is that correct? As long, oh, sorry. As long as the individual 
has actually become properly tax resident. And remember, we're talking 320, sir. He, as long he, as the person has become properly tax resident in what, rural, sir. You're granting this, that under Category 2. You are granting this under Category 2 status. Yes, but lots, more, lots of individuals at the moment, because we are EU, so EU, EEA and Swiss nationals can automatically come and live and take up residence in Gibraltar without having to be given any tax, any particular status at all, um, because we are part of the freedom of movement of persons. But in general terms, the, the, the principle that you are pointing out is if somebody transfers their tax residence, truthfully, truthfully, moves from, say, for the sake of argument, the United Kingdom, and moves to live in Gibraltar, will they be reported on back to the United Kingdom? The answer is no, because the reporting systems, unless you have a citizenship form of taxation like the United States does, where it doesn't matter where you live, it's all about what your nationality is, so if you don't have like, the U.S. system, then it's all about where you are truly tax resident. And that's correct, sir. Uh, also, uh, give, give. So uh, Gibraltar, unlike Malta and Cyprus, and uh, Austria is, uh, it's not one that is um, selling citizenship. Okay. Do you want me to answer that, sir? Sorry. Was that a question? Yeah, we do. Okay, it's just with the translation sometimes is a, bit, a little bit behind. Um, no, we do not offer a citizenship program at all, a passport program. There are lots of EU member states that do, but we do not. 